Hey everyone, in today's video, we'll be showing you how you can get over 200,000 plus visitors to your website or blog without building any backlinks. Now, if you're already feeling a little bit skeptical, then you're not alone. I too was pretty skeptical um, about whether or not you can actually get that amount of page views without building backlinks. But after reading a few case studies, watching a couple YouTube videos, and then seeing our growth within our different blogs, it's pretty evident that this strategy works and I'm sure one of you can benefit from using this within your business. I came across a video by Matt Diggity and Corey. And in this video, they explained the importance of topical authority. And while strictly focusing on this strategy, they were able to get over 500,000 visitors to their website within a couple of months. And the interesting part of this case study is that they didn't focus on the things that you typically would. So for instance, on-page optimization, backlinking, and technical SEO wasn't really a focus in these case studies. But as you can see, they still got some pretty crazy growth for a new website. And after going through this case study, it made me really think about the websites and the blogs that I currently have in my portfolio. So from three of the newer blogs that I have within my portfolio, for one of them, I focused on writing on related topics and topics that are very niche and within one topic. And for the other two blogs, I sort of wrote on some broader topics and didn't really put any thought into creating specific blog topics or blog posts. And as you can see, the blog in which we focused on creating topical authority ranks for a lot more keywords compared to the blogs in which we wrote about broad or topics that were sort of and not done in an intentional way. So just from this little experiment, I can already see the importance of improving and creating topical authority. And this is especially true if you're a new blog or a new website trying to get into a niche. So just before we get into the strategy, I just want to show you guys a tool that we've been using. It's called Jarvis. Now Jarvis is a copywriting AI and it's literally one of the best in the business and you can use it to write copy for blog post, Facebook ads, Google ads, or whatever you're using copywriting in your business for. So I'll leave a five day free trial below this video for Jarvis. Be sure to check it out. It's amazing. So what exactly is topical authority? Well, topical authority is a perceived authority over a subject or an area of a subject. And this authority is perceived by Google. So for instance, if you Google anything that's related to health, you can almost guarantee that Healthline will be within the top positions of Google. And that's because over time, Healthline is seen as an authority within the health space. So what that means is anytime Healthline creates an article or a blog post about a specific topic, Google will give preference to Word Healthline compared to another website. And that's great for Healthline, but how do you build topical authority for your website? In order to start building or increasing your topical authority, it all starts with your keyword research. So you want to make sure that your keyword research is being done in a coherent and an intentional way that makes sense for the site structure that you're creating. So for instance, here we have a very typical SEO silo. And what a silo is, it's just the sitemap or the structure of your website. And we can see here we have the home page, and from the home page, we have three different categories. One is about cricket bats, one is about cricket balls, and the other is about cricket bags. Now, under the cricket bats, we have a couple different brands, and under the cricket ball, again, we have a couple different brands, and under the cricket bats, we have a couple different brands as well. So this is a very simple way in which you can think about your blog or website. Now, this is a very simple SEO silo or site structure, and most of the times, they need a more in-depth silo or sitemap. The most popular SEO silos is known as the top-down or reverse cycle silo. And this can work for any website or blog that you're using. 
Now let's say that you have a beauty blog and from those beauty blogs, you have three main subcategories and one is on skincare, one is on makeup and one is on hair. And from these subtopics, you have further more subtopics. From the subcategory here, you also have hairstyles, hair products, and hair extensions. And going a little bit deeper into your sub subcategory, you'll then have another category under hair extensions, which would be how to install your own hair extensions, maybe the different types of hair extensions that you can get. And you also may have a section which talks about where you can buy hair extensions or reviews of hair extensions brands. And there's many reasons why you'd want to take the time out to be able to structure and organize your site in such a manner. And one of them is faster keyword rankings. And the idea behind this is when you make Google's life easier, it'll rank you faster. Now, obviously there's a lot of variables to this, but it does sort of make sense because you do have a crawl budget for each website. And when you're a newer website, your crawl budget is limited. And that's why it takes longer for newer websites to index their URLs. And that's because Google's crawl budget is again limited when you're a newer website. So if your website is well organized into these silos, then when Google crawls your website, they'll be able to start from your home page and you always wanna make sure on each page you're interlinking to the next page. This is very important because if you're not interlinking, then Google will not know that these pages are connected, which will make it harder for them to crawl, which would pretty much make everything that you've done useless. So from your beauty page, you wanna link out to your subcategories. And from your hair page, you wanna link out to your hairstyles, hair products, and so on. And from your hair extensions, again, you're going to link out to these other pages. So the Google crawl budget will be more optimized because it'll be able to flow through a website easier and search engines are lazy. So if you can organize your website in this manner, you should be able to rank a little bit faster. And the second benefit that you can get from utilizing SEO silos is that you get better link velocity. So let's say that you get a backlink onto your home page. Now, if your home page is an orphan page, but it doesn't have any internal linking, then that link will only go to the beauty page. But if your home page uh, is linking out to different categories, then that link juice will flow. So for instance, your backlink juice will go to skin, makeup, hair, and then that will also flow down into your hairstyles. And then that link juice will then flow down to the other parts of your website that's linked. And also what you want to do is not just only link downwards, but you want to also link upwards. So in the category of how to's or types of where or where to buy hair extensions, you'd want to link back to your hair extensions page as well. So if you get a link from your types of hair extensions, that flows back up to hair extensions, which flows back up to hair and so on. And another reason why topical authority and SEO silos are important is because it gives a better customer or user experience. So think about it. When you're browsing a website and you're reading a blog post about whatever you've searched up, you wanna make sure that you're getting all of the information that you need. So for instance, if I'm looking up for the best golf clubs, when I go through that blog post, yes, I may get the answer that I need, but maybe I also wanna read about the individual brands. So as you can see right in this blog post, I can go ahead and read. <clears throat> and once I go through that blog post, maybe I'd want to read something else that's related. For instance, the 11 best golf club for ladies, the nine best putters and so on and so forth. But this is good because not only am I staying longer on the website, but I'm also able to get more information that will help me make my decision. And lastly, you have a much more organized website. And this helps you when thinking about writing content because you can stay focused and stay on track. And this makes it easier because we know if we wanna create topical authority over the subcategory of here, then we'll focus our writing and all of our content on here, hairstyles, hair products, hair extensions, how to types, where to buy, and we'll also write more and create more subcategories 
under here products and here styles because we want to make sure that we're covering all of our bases and writing everything that we need to do when it comes to hair. And that's why keyword research is so important. Once we've built out our site structure, we can then go ahead and start getting all of the topics that we need to then start creating topical authority. And an easy way to do that is to go into your favorite keyword research tool and just go ahead and search the parent topic, which is here. And from here, you'll get a bunch of matching terms. Um, you can see the search volume, see the difficulty, and then start writing everything you can around that parent topic, creating your subcategories and interlinking within those articles so that you're then passing on the link juice, but you're making it easier for Google to crawl your website. So I can see how powerful and beneficial building topical authority can be for a new website. So I'm going to be doing a brand new case study. Uh, it's going to be a new blog around a specific topic and I'm going to try to rank that and get as much traffic as humanly possible in the shortest period of time. To do that, I'll be implementing the same strategies that I shared within this video. First is going to be keyword research around that parent topic, finding all of the subcategories that I can, creating that silo, and then start creating blogs around that specific topic. I'm going to interlink into other subcategories that make sense and I'm going to really focus on just sticking to one topic and see what sort of results I get. And obviously I'll keep you guys updated with that. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that I did a good job at explaining topical authority. I am still learning about this strategy, so please forgive me if I didn't do a great job. If you have any questions or you want me to clarify anything, just leave it in the comment below and I'll try my best to get back to you. And if you learned something new today or you learned a strategy that you can implement in your business, then give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more useful tutorials. Until next video, stay well.